I think the most important memories I have of ballet coming into my life, I mean working with the National Ballet of Canada, doing the Nutcracker five years in a row, doing all those different roles, being on the Hummingbird Centre stage with 3,000 people at the age of 10. I think I did show promise from a young age, but I didn't know I did. Um, a lot of people around me always told me, you know, I was very talented and I had really good dancers feet. And from when I was little, I was really flexible. I could one Christmas morning, I just slid into the splits, and I was like, I didn't know I could do that, or like I'd accidentally kick myself in the head, and it was just like these weird little quirky things as a kid that you don't realize can shape you to be something. You just they're just kind of part of your body, so it's always been inside of me. Life as a boarding student at NBS was intense. Um, the first few weeks, you're not allowed to have any communication with your family. And my family, my parents also got divorced in those first few weeks. So there was a lot of like emotional trauma right off the get-go. They kind of plan out your entire day for you. They wake you up with the PA system. They put you to bed with the um, house parents coming around and turning off your lights. And I mean, if they saw your lights on after they put you to bed, you're grounded. So it's like every single day, you know, you have breakfast until 8.30. Then you have two academic courses from 8.30 to 10. Then you have ballet from 10 to 12. Then you have lunch from 12 to 12.45. Then you have other academic courses from 12.45 to 4.30. Then from 4.30 to 6.30, you either had fitness, which you had every day, either body conditioning on land or in the pool, or you have repertoire, or you have partnering, or you have point. It depends what age, like everything changes as you grow up to grade 12. And then you have dinner till seven and then you have homework hour from like seven to eight and then they come around and put you to bed at nine. So it's like, and every single day, the same thing, like same uniform, same hairstyle, same everything. It's really hard because you live, I mean, you live three girls in one room. You have one bathroom for the entire floor and there's like 30 or 40 girls per floor and three floors. So. You do form bonds, but at the same time, you also have the sense that it's, there's competition because every year they kick somebody out. So it's like every year you had like an assessment at the end of the year. And it's not that they have to kick people out, but as you get older, they get very particular. If your neck isn't long enough, you're gone. If you don't fit their box, you're gone. If your turnout isn't good enough, you're gone. I was at the National Ballet School from the age of 9 to 15. And I stopped because I grew really, really fast. I forget the exact number, but it was something crazy like 6 inches in 7 months. And you don't realize somebody's growing so fast, so I still kept doing the same things. And I ended up dislocating my knees, both of them, a few times in one week. And so that took me off right away because I couldn't really do much. And I mean, once your legs are gone as a ballet dancer, you can't really do much else. And then about a month after, I busted my knees, uh, my back went out of line. And so I decided to leave. It was my decision to take a year off at first and go. So I moved back home to Hamilton. I went to a normal public school. And that was probably the biggest transition of my life to date, going from this private school in the middle of the gay area of Toronto, which is safe, you know what I mean? There's only 140 students from grades 5 to 12 to a public school with 2,500 people and I mean thankfully my older sister went there so I knew somebody but I, don't, I didn't know any of these people because I left when I was nine and it was hard. I mean after having your whole life scheduled for you, I remember having anxiety attacks because I'd get home at three o'clock and I'd do my homework in 15 minutes and suddenly I was like I have nothing to do. I have nothing to do and I'd go to my mom and I'm like give me a project, give me something to do and I had breakdowns and it was just it was terrifying and I mean even from a physical standpoint you know I started getting curves I started getting a bit bigger I mean I was roughly the same height I am now like I was 5'9 but I was just over a hundred pounds when I left so it was just it was a big change and I remember thinking I'm like I'm getting big like I'm getting too big like this isn't good and my mom if it wasn't for my mother like she was like no this is normal a woman has curves this is what's supposed to happen the positive aspects that dancing brought into my life, um, there's lots. I mean, it's so giving 
You know what I mean? To the person, to the audience, to everything, to the dancer, to the people watching you. Dancing today, I mean, it feels so wonderful because my muscles are sore and I can feel everything shaking, but it makes me so happy. And it's expression, it's the purest form of expression I've ever known. Any other type of art, I think everybody has their one form, and no matter what I do for the rest of my life, dancing will be that form for me. Even when I'm home and I have nothing to do and a song comes on, I immediately start moving to it. There's something in giving all that part of you and exposing that vulnerability in some of the movements and some of the songs. There's something about dance that to this day I can do and it makes me so happy and it makes me so... It puts a smile on my face and that all comes from NBS.